All right, everybody. Leo Cannell here with today's Seven Figures Club podcast. Today, my friends, if you have ever wanted to be involved with e-commerce or Amazon, and I know a lot of you are, a lot of our clients, a lot of our audience are Amazon sellers. And one of the most, uh, you know, unfortunate things that happens to Amazon sellers is you're right in the middle of building your business. And all of a sudden you get that dreaded issue where your account's been temporarily suspended or there's some issue. And the gentleman we're bringing on today, Scott, Scott Margulis. Is that how you say it, uh, Scott? It's uh, Margolis. Scott Margolis is uh, going to unpack how he and his team can help get your Amazon account back on track. Listen, this is a multi-trillion dollar industry now, e-commerce. And for sellers, there's so many amazing opportunities. And that's why we love providing funding for e-commerce clients. But just a little background on Scott. He actually started his career on Capitol Hill and ended up uh, later becoming a COO for a major marketing company, worked that company for 15 years. And he also began selling part-time on eBay in the year 2000 and then uh, jumped into the Amazon universe in 2012. He was in the top 25% of Amazon sellers in Q4 that year. So obviously if you're in the top Top 25% of Amazon sellers, you're doing very well. He still maintains a top-rated eBay account, but he has really shifted to being able to focus on helping sellers of both you know, account health issues as well as big picture strategies to be able to grow your e-commerce business. He has a 98% success rate, which is amazing with appeals and he's helped hundreds of companies reach new revenue heights with his strategies and experience. So he is an e-commerce expert and we're excited to have him on the podcast. We're also gonna talk a little bit about funding and how this can help you know, e-commerce and Amazon business owners. And uh, this is also going to be live with Scott's community as well. So Scott, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, I appreciate it. You know, it was uh, good to meet you recently. I'm, I'm glad we got a chance to connect and. I think there's there's so much value and opportunity. So I'm glad to be able to you know introduce that to a lot of people who need to hear more about what what you can do to help them and, and uh, how we can help them on on a number of different platforms. Absolutely, well said, Scott. Yeah, we were fortunate. Uh, we just uh, both came back from the uh, Proven Conference for e-commerce entrepreneurs that was in Tampa. Bay, Florida recently in July, and it was an amazing conference with amazing people, people with great values and principles who are building, you know, their empires on Amazon and doing it uh, one product at a time. And so, and, and as luck would have it, Scott and I were right next to each other, our two booths there, as uh, we were helping those e-commerce entrepreneurs with funding and Scott, they're helping them to get their accounts growing and get them back in the game when an issue occurs. The first question I have, Scott, is, is how did you go from, you know, kind of a, a political career at Capitol Hill and then kind of get into marketing and operating, you know, the operations of a marketing company? Sure, I mean, it was, a, it was an interesting transition. I was certainly interested in uh, the political world. I, I found there would be a lot of uh, intrigue there and, and a lot of, uh, inside baseball, all those kinds of things and, and all of that. Uh, very valuable in terms of strategizing and, and sort of understanding the things that are behind the scenes and, and how certain things work uh, you know, in the world of Capitol Hill, all that kind of thing. Um, but my role there what wasn't primarily political. I, I got a chance to interact with you know, a lot of presidents and CEOs who have come in to meet with the member of Congress and I got a chance to, you know, talk to them, but my, my role also got a lot to do with uh, the managing the office there. So going into more of a COO role um, was, was fairly straightforward in terms of the background that I've had uh, managing that operation and, and, that, and that budget um, compared to what it was like to manage a budget for an operation of, of 50 employees. And so, um, you know, working in, in that atmosphere and wearing a number of Acts there, and that was all a great experience for me to go out on my own uh, as a seller, as a consultant, as an entrepreneur. Gotcha. No, that's that's fascinating. It is a world of intrigue and fascination in, in politics, but you're right. There's a lot of very smart people that have to manage the operations. So you were kind of there and then, and then uh, started uh, working at a marketing company where you were there for 15 years 
and it looks like you were really, you know, involved in the operations there, then what kind of led to, uh, you know, trying out and testing out eBay? And boy, if you got started in 2000, Scott, that means you've been kind of like a godfather in this industry, 21 years in it. And that was kind of the beginning with eBay. What were some of your first experiences like with eBay and, and uh, selling products there? We kind of get to see the growth of everything. It's, you know, the growth of trends and the growth of marketplaces and, and how people interact with uh, buyers and sellers online from, from both vantage points. You get to see how different people connect across different platforms from advertising and marketing and all that kind of thing. I was uh, obviously very interested in, in the communication, the marketing side of things prior to even getting into uh, you know, politics in a straightforward way. But then after that, seeing everything sort of behind the scenes in a marketing company that had customers in all 50 states and interacting with, uh, it was a B2B company. So there's, you know, yet more exposure working with clients at a high level and, and seeing what their needs were, what their problems were, how we could help them solve various problems in their organizations. And then, you know, all of that kind of coming together to be able to resolve issues for, for sellers, you know, in these various marketplaces who are looking to get their products in front of people, you know, getting getting your uh, eyeballs on your products. That's the name of the game in a lot of different ways. I mean, everybody's looking at that, whether you're talking about SEO or whether you're talking about any other kind of optimization to get people interested or uh, aware of what it is that you have to offer, whether it's products or services, any of those kinds of things, all of that sort of plays well together. And you get to see all these trends over time and what's happening with Google as they become a player and what's happening with uh, other com companies that are focused on ad dollars and, and getting in front of people and developing a social following, all those kinds of things, branding, marketing, they just all play together. And, and to be able to have the long view instead of, oh, what's happening now? What's, what's the most popular uh, social platform now? And who are people following? It, it's kind of helpful to see where things have come from and, and to see how people have interacted and to see okay, who are the early adopters and, and what are the long-term effects of adopting a, a new plan over here or running this type of ad over here? Or what, what types of uh, niches are most uh, effective for specific types of products? All of those things, I think you have to have both a long view and then a very short, narrow uh, executional style. So uh, it all kind of plays hand in hand. Well said, Scott. I appreciate you sharing uh, your perspective on that. And so for all of those looking to get involved in e-commerce or who are already involved, what has sort of this evolution been? At the beginning, eBay certainly, I think, was the bigger platform, and Amazon has obviously massively surpassed uh, eBay at this point. But I've also talked to other sellers who are having a lot of success still with eBay, and there's maybe a little bit more focus on providing a better experience for sellers at eBay versus Amazon, but how would you kind of, you know, describe the two today in, in 2021 and, and uh, what the opportunities uh, offer people uh, and, and entrepreneurs with both platforms today? You know, it's an interesting evolution. And as you think about, okay, what's your product mix? I think that plays a, a huge role in determining where are the people that are interested in your product? Where do they hang out? You know, your, your audience might be primarily on Facebook or it might be primarily on eBay or you have a certain subset of, of the categories that you're selling and, and those are hot on Amazon. I think you have to play toward where the people are, where you're going to get the most bang for your buck in advertising and the most bang for your buck in terms of people's attention and the time that they're going to spend. You know, everybody's paying attention in the past to, okay, what are the open rates and, and what are the special keywords that you can use in your subject line in your email or maybe I should get into texting people now or gosh I run this type of promotion on Facebook and then I drive ads over here to Pinterest or whatever and it's like you've got to figure out where you should be you have to really hone in on where are the fish that you're trying to catch and and then I think it matters quite a bit to be very specific, very personalized, very strategic about where you spend your time, where you spend your ad dollars. Because one person could be killing it over on Amazon and it's crickets on Walmart and somebody else, they're you know, gangbusters on Walmart and maybe Amazon's not as exceptional for them. And 
and everything to me is tailored, it's personalized. You can come up with broad generalizations where you can say, you know, someone's doing 60% of their sales on Amazon, and then another 10% on uh, eBay, and another 10% on Walmart, another 10% on Shopify, like that. And, and that might hold true for a, a majority of people, but it's not always the case. No, that, that's uh, good information. And you brought up even something even more important that, you know, you've also got uh, the Walmart platform that's really starting to explode now. And sure. there's massive opportunities with Walmart right now. But the one common denominator that happens with all the platforms, whether it's Walmart, Amazon, or eBay is as a seller, there are things that can go wrong that can put your account in jeopardy. And so for, you know, new sellers or those who haven't run into these issues, what do they need to know? And what are some of the common issues that uh, come up? And then how can they, you know, you know, how can they put an advocate like uh, e-com seller tools to work to kind of, you know, hopefully fix those problems. And as a doc, I almost call you like an e-com uh, seller doctor where you're fixing 98% of those problems. So what are those problems coming up? And, and how can they work with e-com seller tools to kind of find those solutions and then hopefully avoid them in the future? Sure, I mean, that's a great way to jump into, well, how do, how do we help people the most and, and who can we help the best? And, uh, you know, if you're asking yourself those types of questions, we've had uh, clients who are just getting started on either eBay or Amazon. We've had clients in the top 500 of Amazon sellers and, and the top 500 of of eBay sellers as well. And, and some of those uh, sellers uh, or brands or manufacturers, what have you, that they've been killing it on Amazon and eh, eBay might be crickets or, or might be vice versa. Um, and, and it really matters what your goals are and what kinds of uh, problems you're having. I, I look at what we're offering, you know, we're specialists in Amazon and specialists in eBay. And then I would say generalists on these other platforms, other platforms, we can we can help almost anyone who is trying to increase their sales online, um, and and we can certainly help when when somebody's having problems, which is how we come across you know most of the clients who show up. They're almost always uh, word of mouth or referral. Someone is having trouble on one of these platforms. Either that, they're trying to grow or expand. They are looking for uh, advice or expertise. How can they? get more engaged, how can they increase their sales? What can you do to optimize your, your listings? And it's, it's really difficult, especially if you're a solopreneur, or have a, you know, relatively small team, but I'm working with, you know, directors of marketing, directors of e-commerce and, and founders that they're not necessarily specialists in a specific area. They come into a, a problem over here with, with Amazon when they're hearing that there's an issue with one of their SKUs or ASINs uh, they, they receive some sort of notification from seller performance and they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to respond next. Um, and, and so they need help with that. And it, it makes so much more sense to not beat your head against the wall or, or even trip up and, and potentially permanently lose your account or permanently lose the ability to sell a specific product that, that may be important to you. And if, if you come across an issue like that and you need help, then I strongly encourage you to reach out to an expert who would be able to provide the advice that you need to get out of that trouble as quickly as possible to have a, a clear way forward. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, you know, hiring a, a Sherpa if you want to climb Mount Everest. You, you don't just go out there on your own. That's where you come across in the spring, there are a lot of bodies out there. I mean, people that are maybe capable of climbing the mountain either on their own or even with a team, but if they didn't have a guide, they were much less likely to be successful. Or, you know, if you have a, a medical condition, you can't fix it on your own. You don't go read in the, you know, Merck manual or the, you know, physician's death reference. You go to a doctor who's a specialist in the area where you need help instead of, oh, gosh, uh, maybe I should do the surgery on my own. It just doesn't make sense. And especially if you're operating at a high level or it's high risk or anything along those lines, you don't want to lose the time. You don't want to lose the traction. You don't want to lose the uh, capability that you could be honed in and focused on the areas where you have expertise, make the most bang for your buck, the most, you know, dollars for your time. You, you don't want to mess around with something over here where you're not an expert. We can easily outsource that. That holds true for so many different parts of your 
organization, not just, oh, you're having trouble over here, you're dealing with seller performance. I mean, you want somebody who's maybe a, a specialist in listing optimization. You want a specialist in uh, something like your uh, ad management. That doesn't mean you have to always outsource. You can always get somebody hired in-house. You can get somebody trained. We offer help with those kinds of things also. Um, but you just don't want to spin your wheels. I mean, right now is the time to make big bucks. If, if Amazon's at 60% representing uh, the dollars that are spent or available in e-commerce today, and, and only 17% of all dollars uh, spent in retail are online, you just look at the potential there, it's still gangbusters. You know, when I was telling, you know, you were talking about, okay, I was in the top 25% of sellers for Q4 in 2012, and in the top 10% in 2014, Honestly, those were different times. It was easy then. And, and to be that big wasn't as big of a deal as it would be now. But, you know, we've seen these things. We've seen what it takes to get there even today and how to help people ramp up or get to the next level or grow from, you know, 1 million to 3 million or from 5 million to 10 million, all those kinds of things, whether you're a private label or whether you're a manufacturer coming to the platform for the first time. Everybody needs help because you can only see as much as you can see. You haven't been there before. And, and we've helped, you know, sellers in every country almost, it seems like, or at least every continent. And, you know, all across the world, all across all these different time zones of every different size. If, if there's a problem, there's a pretty good chance we've seen it. We've, we've solved that or found a solution or been able to refer somebody to somebody who can help. Um, you know, we, we're in a sol solutions business. You know, we fix these problems. We can see things that that you can't see because you're often you're too close to the problem. I, I call it like entrepreneur's myopia. And that's the biggest problem I see with most of the business owners I run into is they are too close to the problem. And, and we've got the ability to step back and be somewhat, you know, uh, objective. And in, in, we, we can come to a, a, an issue dispassionately, see the solution and help them. I think it's just such a powerful point that you're making there, Scott, that it's it's like a, a doctor, it's having an advocate, and it's understanding that everything in business, to a certain extent, comes down to risks and rewards. And so you can risk your seven, eight figure, you know, e-commerce business on Amazon by thinking you can just easily figure out the problem, then get your account shut down and lose out just so massively. Or you can you know, make an investment in an advocate in someone who's experienced like yourself and your team to fix those problems and maybe even bring someone in internally and have them be trained by you and your team so that you can avoid those issues. And it's just not worth taking the risk of trying to hope you figure it out when you can have a professional who's 98% effective. I mean, that's those are pretty good odds when you're dealing with someone who's 98% effective. And if you don't have the, the chops experience the know-how, that's a big risk to try and take that on your, your own. And it's, it's something that we talk to entrepreneurs about all the time with funding. Like you kind of have one opportunity to get a bunch of money at the beginning to launch and, and grow an e-commerce business. And if you go to the wrong lenders and you get new hard inquiries on your credit, now you're going to lose that opportunity to get funding for the next six to 12 months because you just hope that you could figure it out versus finding a funding advocate. So I think there's a lot of truth in what you say, whether if you know you, you need to be defended by a legal advocate, whether it's a doctor to be your medical advocate. I think that's what we're seeing more and more as the world becomes more complex. It's impossible. Yes, we can all go on Google and find WebMD and, and different, uh, you know, information, but to be really accurate and effective, we've got to put a, an experienced professional on our side and that puts the odds in our favor. So I think you've made some outstanding points with that. Now, uh, to be clear, when you're talking about the 98% success rate, we're talking about like suspensions and appeals, specifically on Amazon, but we can help people with eBay as well. And, and I, I talked a lot about how you can sort of do that in a self-service way uh, in, in a new book that I just uh, had published. It's uh, Amazon Plans of Action. You can look it up and find that on Amazon if you just type in Plans of Action, but it's Plans of Action, Proven Tactics for Winning Appeals. And that equips sellers to be able to do a lot of these things on their own. I, I strongly believe that's a skill set that a lot of sellers need to have. You're constantly coming into issues related to account health, seller performance issues, 
uh, trying to stay on top of and stay up with and compliant with the terms of service on Amazon. Something everybody should have read if you're if you're a seller on the platform, they should be familiar with by now. And, and I want to make sure people know what to do and how to do it in terms of how to stay out of trouble, how to get out of trouble if they're in it. Um, so, so that's one of the reasons I wanted to be able to introduce that to people so that they could be more confident to be able to handle issues like that on their own. So if I'm an Amazon seller and I run into some of these uh, suspensions, appeals, and issues with my account, like what's the next step? How should I get in touch with you? What should I should I do or not do and, until you know you can uh, help? I mean, what 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 should I do? Because this happens you know, all the time, all the time. all the time, all the time, and it's it's really kind of sad and scary in some ways because of the fact that people don't know what to do uh, or they panic or or can get super emotional. And some some of those times are some of the worst experiences because you're you can often make a problem worse, right? It's like it's almost like you're you get out in the water and you're drowning. If you weren't focused on lack of ability to, you know, get air, if you were focused on swimming and being calm and not panicking, um, you'd have a much better chance of surviving. And and so when it comes to, oh, you run into a problem, you don't know what to do, your, your best opportunity is to be able to sort of step back a little bit, you know, kind of breathe, get, get a little bit of perspective, and have a better understanding of what's going on, maybe even Google the problem before you start to respond or react. And, and that helps immensely. You know, if you want to know, you've received this type of complaint and they're asking for this type of response and you've got to have it figured out, this is the right way to respond. One of, uh, I'll share with you the biggest mistake that people make is they will respond back to Amazon and ask in their response, what did I do wrong? Or can you tell me how to fix this? And that gets counted against you. You're asking for a handout, get smacked down. And so you, you don't want to be in that position because what you really want to do is give them what they're asking for. And if you don't know how to do that, you don't know how to do it until you've studied what to do and, and how to respond. So you want to avoid a sort of uneducated response. That is uh, fascinating, or, Scott. I, I can't believe that because I know so many people that you run into an issue and you're like, hey, you know, what did I do wrong? And that just makes them more upset. Like it's your job as a seller to know what the terms and conditions are and to be able to, you know, essentially fix that problem. That's, that is a huge tip. I, I had no idea that that's how you should respond. I mean, it's a, it's a big problem of people who have done things, people who have accomplished things, people who have expertise in a certain area there, they have, a sense of, I know what I'm doing. I can do things. I'm accomplished. I can make decisions. I can respond a certain way. I can make things happen, but Amazon's different. The rules are different. The way you interact with Amazon is different. Their standards are different. What they require of you as a seller is next level. It's like the highest, strictest level of any type of marketplace or selling that you can do. And your experience is helpful no matter how much success you've had as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as somebody who's started other businesses and sold them and gotten into this space, that still doesn't mean you know what you're doing on Amazon. And so unless you've spent time really studying what to do and how to do it, unless you've spent time really learning, even just taking a course, even if you're, even if it's a $5,000 course, even if you've received coaching, it still might not be enough to prepare you for the ugly side of the platform. Of, of the problems that can arise, of, of what you can run into when you're not expecting and how to deal with those types of things. And it's just a completely different world. Um, and so it's good to at least even be aware of, of that fact. And if you run into something you haven't seen before, if you have a question, if you have problems that you're trying to figure out how to get out of, it's, it's a really good idea to study what that problem is. Somebody somewhere will have talked about that on the internet that you won't be likely to be the first person to have ever experienced X type of problem. And so it's worth at a very minimum, minimum Googling it first. Don't just, they, they say, hey, please give us a plan of action. It's, it's not the same as a plan of action for other platforms or in other disciplines. I don't care if you're, you know, Six Sigma Black Belt or, you know, Green Belt or whatever. You've got specific training in, in best practices, you know, 901C. Uh, certified, whatever, it's just, it, it's not the same. 
you know, you, you really need to have specific training, specific areas to be able to handle those types of things. And uh, if you haven't had it, if you haven't been exposed to it, then it's, it's uh, time to do so. Um, I do have a course that's uh, going to be available pretty soon. It's almost launched uh, on account health training. It's the kind of thing that would be perfect for uh, director of marketing to pay for that course to be able to have people in the organization uh, hired or trained to be able to monitor the account health for a large organization. Or, you know, if you as an individual, you're, you're the solopreneur, you're wearing all the hats, you're responsible to making sure that your Amazon account remains healthy. That's a course you'd want to sign up for um, in order to be able to gain that knowledge and expertise to be able to manage the majority of things on your account. Um, I'll be talking about that more. There'll be a landing page for that on my website where you can find out more about that and the other services and the book that's available, all that kind of thing. Uh, EcomSellerTools.com, E-C-O-M, SellerTools with an S.com. And, and that's how you can get a hold of me as well. As far as my, my schedule's on there, you can uh, get a hold of us and, and get a time on the calendar to be able to just talk through some things and see if we're the right fit to be able to solve some issue for you or point you in the right direction. Outstanding, guys. So if you're listening again, that's Ecom Seller Tools, E-C-O-M, and then sellertools.com. The first thing you notice when you land on Scott's website here is you've got three different categories. You've got reinstatement, suspensions, account health, and you can kind of book a consultation and really get an idea of what your options are and what the next steps are to go ahead and get your account reinstated, to work through suspensions. And most importantly, if you haven't had those issues, start working on your account health. There's gonna be a course coming out, he's got a book, but most importantly, I mean, his time is worth a lot of money. I mean, he's literally saved so many uh, e-commerce business owners, probably tens of millions of dollars because they, they might not have gotten their account reinstated. They might not have got that, that suspension taken care of. So once again, that's ecomsellertools.com to go ahead and take some action. And that's the most important thing, I think, what you're advocating, Scott. How important is it for someone to just get ahead of this? And maybe you haven't or you had or whatever it is, but you've got to stay on top of your education. It sounds like that's something you can help them out with. Yeah, it's, it's huge. I mean, you, you want to be aware in advance of, of the types of things that are required of you as it relates to account health. It's kind of like, well, if somebody's having a major health issue at your table at dinner, it's too late to you know, get your EMT training. It's, it's too late to go to the Red Cross. You, if somebody needs to take action right then and there, you know what to do. I mean, it's a little bit more straightforward if they're choking and you're gonna use the Heimlich, but what if it's something else? Uh, you, you've got to have an understanding of, okay, are they having a heart attack? Or are they having difficulty breathing? Do they just have a stroke? Uh, you can be prepared for all of those types of things in advance um, by just having this type of awareness, especially if, you're, if your game plan is you're working on your business at a minimum of, let's say, an hour a day. It's really easy as an entrepreneur, as a solopreneur to get stuck working in your business every day. There's just so many different things to do, so many different hats to wear. But I mean, a huge game changer is working on your business an hour a day. During that time, I think it makes all kinds of sense to be learning, you know, to be preparing, to be going through training yourself, making sure that you've read through the terms of service, making sure that you're familiar with how to, you know, manage and pay attention to and respond to things that are showing up in your account health dashboard. So learning new tricks or services that are available or new software that could be beneficial. All those different things that are more tactical and strategic besides just, oh, doing these things that need done, putting tape on boxes. Oh, I lost you. Well, well said, Scott. Uh, appreciate uh, you know sharing everything. And, and guys, we're going to have a, a big uh, title on this. It's going to be you know how to keep your Amazon account uh, from being shut down and get this uh, you know on all of the major platforms. But again, the, the, the whole idea behind everything that we do is 
put yourself in a position to succeed, put the odds in your favor and working with an advocate professional like Scott is going to allow you to do that. And there's so many e-commerce opportunities. You don't want to let those slip through your fingers by not, you know, making that investment with Scott. So make sure you guys go to ecomsellertools.com. And uh, Scott, any final words of wisdom that e-commerce business owners or those who are looking to get started should be thinking about as they, you know, protect their, their account health? I don't want people to be afraid to jump in. Sometimes at some point, you know, you have a certain level of training and it's important to, to jump in. You just want to make sure that you're doing it the right way so you don't end up getting smacked upside the head because you didn't know what you were doing. And so, you know, at some point you got to transition to doing the things that are necessary to make the sales, to buy the products, to have sourcing uh, that's the, the right type of sourcing for you, products that you're familiar with and you know where they came from. You know, if you think about Amazon standards, you want to have receipts or invoices for everything you buy. I no longer view it as viable to be looking at, you know, closeouts and liquidation and shelf pulls and all those kinds of things. I know there are plenty of people who do that and they're successful at it. It's not necessarily the best fit for somebody who's brand new and doesn't know the platform, doesn't understand Amazon standards. You know, there are, there are things that you can avoid as a new seller. There are things that you can avoid if you're on other platforms, you're multi-channel or omni-channel and you want to get on to Amazon and work with a number of different brands and manufacturers. And they're doing really well on their own. Maybe they have distribution, maybe they're Amazon one key and they're trying to get into three key or transition that way. Maybe they're on Walmart one key, but they want to get into Amazon. 3P. There are all kinds of different ways where somebody shows up and they're new to the platform. It's just keep in mind it's not the same. That you can't just hire somebody who give them a title of director of e-commerce and expect that they are automatically going to know what to do when it comes to Amazon. But one of the other things we're talking about uh, best practices or tips or, or things that people need to know. I, I think it's important for people to know more about what funding. Is available what it is that you're offering i, I know that there's been plenty of conversations i've had with clients where they're thinking hey i need to be able to get access to funds to be able to accomplish these things and i know that you have a very specific focus and subset and I'd, I'd like to be able to have people understand what kind of funding is available how much who is it available to how do they qualify how long does it take all those sort of standard basic questions that somebody might have if they could come to your platform engage with you Go to your site. How long does it take to fill out the form? And uh, you know, what should they be thinking that that funding should be used for? How can it help them the most? You know, those are great questions, Scott, and we deal with those all the time with our e-commerce clients. And so some of the first things that you talk about is in what stage is your e-commerce business, right? And so if you're kind of newer and you're growing and your sales are under $10,000 a month, then there's not going to be a lot of established business funding, but we've created a marketplace of options where you can secure five-year loans that uh, with amounts as high as $100,000 affordable monthly payment. The way you qualify for those is typically our funding sources are looking for about a 650 FICO credit score or better and some verifiable income. So maybe this is your side hustle. You still have your W-2 job or a spouse or partner. And so we can get you loans based off of those criteria. Also, you can qualify for, you know, our credit stacking program where you can get business and personal accounts at a 0% interest rate for as long as 20 months. And that's just based all on your credit. And you can get as much as $100,000 through our credit stacking program. So you kind of have in the startup small business phase as an e-commerce entrepreneur, you've got those unsecured loans, those 0% credit lines that you're qualifying based off of credit and maybe some personal income. And then as you start to grow your e-commerce business, you start to build up some sales numbers. Maybe uh, you've been in, in business for up to a year and you're doing at least uh, you know, fifteen dollars to $20,000 a month in sales uh, deposits going through your business bank account or your Amazon account or Shopify or eBay or PayPal, whatever it is. Once you get to that point, then that opens up the doors to where you can get some business loans. And those business loans, you can go down as far typically as a 600 credit score. And those loans are typically going to be equal to the amount of your monthly uh, business bank deposits. So if you're averaging $50,000 a month over the past three to six months, 
then you'll probably be able to qualify for a $50,000 loan. And uh, with a term anywhere from six months to, to 18 months and uh, payments coming out on a weekly basis. And you can kind of go back to that well often as you build relationships with these lenders. And then as you really get more established and maybe you have business tax returns and you start to show some profitability after you've been in business a couple of years, then you can look at really you know, larger business lines of credit. And that's what we were looking at with a lot of the you know, e-commerce uh, attendees that we saw at this conference that you and I were at last week, where some of them are doing 100,000, 500,000, a million dollars a month in sales, and they can qualify for a business line of credit typically that's going to be about the size of their monthly deposits. And so as an e-commerce entrepreneur now, a lot of the ways you grow is by being able to buy and purchase more inventory and move product. And so having that line of credit is very, very helpful. The problem with getting a loan typically we've found with e-commerce is you get it and then, well, you need another one, right? And so if you can have a line of credit that you can build relationships with, pay down, use and draw down and then pay it off and as the sales come in, that's a very powerful way to be able to grow and scale your business uh, with these business lines of credit. And, and again, qualifying your personal credit will always matter as a business owner until maybe you become so big that you're doing $50 million a year in sales. But up until that point, your personal credit will matter. Uh, some tricks to the trade there is if you'll keep your credit card balances below about 45% of the limit before you go apply for funds for your business, that'll keep your credit score high, increase the odds of getting approved. And then, and then if you can show some cash flow some sort of net income and profits on your business tax returns, then that will really open the door to some of these bigger business lines of credit, you know, down the road. I've heard sometimes that it can be beneficial to be max of 30% of, of utility of, of the available uh, credit or debt. Um, and you said 45, how did that play? Well, you, know well, you want to be for sure at 45%, but you're absolutely right, Scott. If you can get down to 30, that's even better. I just know sometimes we're, we're already using those accounts to grow the business and buy inventory. So we want to at least be to 45%, but you're absolutely right. If we can be overall at 30% or below, then that's going to really lead to a higher credit score lower interest rates and more affordable funding for sure. You're absolutely right. And you also want to begin to separate the business from the personal credit as much as possible. At the beginning, you might be using personal credit cards to buy inventory. As you grow the business, you need to get business credit cards that can be used that don't show up on your personal credit, that have less of an impact and start to actually build the credit up of the business. So if you already have a credit card that is quote unquote a personal uh, business card, but it's in your name. Your name is, on there. is that really considered a business card or is that considered a personal card? So if it's in the name of the business and it's reporting to business credit, it is a business card, but you're right. It's always going to be based off of your personal credit until you get that business large enough. The other factor that they'll look at is your business credit score with Dun & Bradstreet. It's called a Paydex score. And generally the ratings from zero to 100 and, and lenders are looking for an 80 or better. So to be able to get to a point where the business really establish, establishes credit is key. And that comes down to building up that Paydex score and building up the business credit by kind of going to the right vendors. So when you're looking at, you know, trying to determine what's your credit score for your business, they've, you've got all these different ways you can get access to that on a personal level. How do you recommend that somebody goes to check their business credit to, to start the things off? Yeah, and if you go direct to Dun & Bradstreet and some of these places, it can be as much as $150 to check your business credit. And we partnered up with nav.com, that's just nav.com. And nav.com has got relationships with Dun & Bradstreet, Business Experian, and FICO SBSS, which is what's used to actually get an SBA loan these days. And that's a great way for about $25, you can check in on your business uh, credit, see how the scores are, what, which accounts are reporting, and then monitor that. And I think it's just $25 a month to be able to monitor the business credit bureaus of all three of the major credit bureaus for your business. Yeah, yeah. if you can just confirm. 
Could you also offer a suggestion for how someone can build their DMB rate? We've actually uh, taken it a step further, Scott. We actually built out a corporate credit education course that gives you the actual vendor list and how to build your profile because it doesn't happen automatically like personal credit. Personal credit, you can go down the street to get a car loan and and that car loan will show up uh, right away on your credit. But with business, you've got to go to the right vendors who will report and you have to actually kind of build that profile yourself for that business credit to get established. But it makes pays big dividends when you can do that. And that's why we built that education course. And a lot of the time, just for going through our funding programs, we'll actually give you that course for free so that you can have the tools you need to build that business credit score. So is that always a... Uh, sort of do it yourself type of thing, take the knowledge from the course and apply it, or do you offer any sort of done for you options there? We have both options. So we have the uh, do it yourself, go through the course, and we have a corporate credit uh, coaching team who have helped over a thousand entrepreneurs build that 80 Paydex score with Dun and Bradstreet and the 80 IntelliScore with business experience so that your business has the credit to kind of stand on its own. Do you ever recommend to a business owner to do anything specific with uh, BBB, uh, Better Business Bureau, or something else specific, different, or engage with uh, BNB? So BBB is is kind of a, a little bit of an older model, and it's definitely more of a, a pay for uh, you know pay for their their build out. But the one thing that we all know is vital, and this is more and more important every single day, are your reviews, right? You've got to have great reviews as a seller on Amazon, or you're going to struggle, right? And it's the same thing with your business. You've got to have great reviews when somebody Googles you. And I think it's super vital to be able to control and dominate the page one search results when someone Googles your business name, your personal name, and especially if they add the word review after that search, and that comes back to building up positive reviews on Google, on sites like the BBB, on sites like Trustpilot. Um, there are different services now where you can build those reviews and really do it in an automated structure with our clients uh, when they, you know, when they're at the end of the funding experience to receive their money, we have automated texts and emails that will go out to them to encourage them to give an honest review. And that's how you can start building those positive reviews. But that's, that's super important. If you don't have positive reviews, then it hurts every single aspect of your business. Do you offer any sort of service or training related to building out the, the Google or the Trustpilot reviews? Uh, we do. We actually have that training in uh, our business accelerator module under the uh, growth accelerator. And we show how to get uh, your, your Google business page set up and how to strate strategically start building up those reviews and especially do it with automated uh, texts and emails. So if somebody wants to engage that way or learn more to be able to you know, look into that or start the process, what's the best way for them to be able to engage? So you could just go to sevenfiguresfunding.com or sevenfigures.com and go ahead and uh, take about 60 seconds to fill out our simple form. And then you'll schedule a time with a funding advisor who can help you out with, you know, growing your business, building your business credit, and of course, funding it. Is that uh, seven spelled out or seven? What's that? Is that seven spelled out? Or seven. Uh, it's, it's not a great question. It's just the digits. So the digit seven and then figures.com or the digit seven and uh, figuresfunding.com. Excellent. Wonderful. Uh, is there any sweet spot for you in terms of, I, I know you mentioned, hey, people just starting and people looking for potentially up to a hundred grand. Um, what do some of those sellers look like? What do some of those business owners look like that that could potentially be interested and get the most use out of the available funding that you offer? You know, some of them are, are just at the beginning stages and they're going through maybe a training program. They bought some inventory or a product too and had some success and they realize that they're kind of up against a, a wall or a ceiling, an obstacle. They can't grow that business unless they can be able to purchase a lot more inventory and maybe even invest in some training and coaching from an expert to be able to help them grow their business. And so that's where we'll get them, you know, some uh, unsecured, no collateral required, 0% interest credit stacking that they can then use 
and uh, only pay on what they use to be able to cover you know, some of the inventory costs and other expenses associated with growing and launching the business. So probably 80% of our clients are in that uh, startup niche and there's just so much they don't know that they need to. And that's where we really come in as an advocate, get them that funding and educate them so they can make good decisions and it certainly helps if they're working with someone who is experienced like yourself that can kind of coach them through what they don't know so that they can grow. Where you should spend your money, where you shouldn't spend it, when you should keep it, how you should spend it, all those kinds of things. Absolutely. What else do you like to see people spend on beside inventory? I would say software. Software is so vital, important. It plays a vital role in our business. And I know so many, you know, Amazon sellers that take advantage of it. And one of the things that's so important is it allows you to get so much more done effectively, efficiently, and create key performance indicators in your business so that you are managing and seeing where are you actually getting results? Which products are most profitable? Well, where can you get discounts in those products? How can you increase the sales of those products? You're all the different things that you have to do. And so I think those are vital pieces that a lot of people need to pay attention to. Do you have any favorite software that you recommend? Like you say, I want to track all my sales. I really want to keep track of my profitability. I want to know what all these different costs are for specific items in my inventory and I want to be able to, I don't want to wait till the end of the year till I go see my account bookkeeper or do my taxes to know if I made any money or not. Is if other than, let's say, QuickBooks or, or something along those lines, is there something you recommend that's like, hey, here's my dashboard and I can see everything? You know, that, uh, that group was at the, that was at the conference uh, last week seemed like they had a really good uh, service. What, what was the name of that group? Why? We'll have to post that, you know. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, I know IntegraShip. I know IntegraShip does a, a lot of provides a lot of uh, software assistance uh, with that. But yeah, I don't I don't know the the specific names off the top of my mind. But yeah, we'll definitely have to post those. But even even something as simple as QuickBooks, like it's amazing to me, Scott, how many business owners in this industry and in e-commerce they don't actually know if they're making money. Except at the end of the month, they're like, oh, is there money left in the bank account? Oh, I guess I made money, right? And, and there's no excuse for that, right? With QuickBooks, if you at least check it once a week, you can automate a lot of the things and check in on your profitability. Because when you're buying and selling inventory and your bank account goes up and down with sales, you don't actually know where you're at. And I think so many business owners are not tracking properly just in QuickBooks to make sure that they're making overall money in the business. And then you're absolutely right. Breaking it down product by product is vital and important to know if you should invest more in a product or if it's time to maybe drop that one and move on to the next one. I was talking to a client last week who has been in the game for several years, but in the last year, He's been, you know, buying and selling, importing, exporting, creating listings, um, you know, had a high ASP average sales price for his product, you know, it was approximately $55 and costs were far below that. And he's like, you know, I'm ready to get out. I'm excited about all the things that are happening right now in terms of all the consolidation and aggregators, people buying and selling Amazon businesses and all that kind of stuff. He's like, I'm ready to take the funds of, and time and effort that I put into all of this and get into something else. I want to go to the next product and make good money with that. So I said, you know, let me help you with that. We can put together the sales reports. He didn't have any p and but he needed to put that together for his uh, accountant so that they could take all of his expenditures and his advertising and all that uh, to be able to get a valuation for his business. He came back to me and he said, all that activity, all that time, all that effort, $600,000 in sales looked amazing. He was break even. No kidding. Unbelievable. I mean, a wow. year of your time to break even. Guarantee he learned a lot. Guarantee we could have helped him be a lot better off than break even. But it's important for you to know what you're doing. It's important for you to know your numbers. You don't want to wait until the end of the year to determine, did I make money or not? You need to know all along the way. And there's certainly software that can help you with that. No question. No question. 
Well, good stuff, Scott. Well, hey, it has been a pleasure and a lot of fun, guys. Hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this information. And most importantly, I think Scott would agree, we hope you guys take action. Don't just learn passively, but write down the, you know, the nuggets that are going to help you to grow and build your business and create your dream life to get into the details. The details is where the success comes. And make sure you put an advocate like Scott and his team on your side. And for all of you looking to grow your business, obviously funding is going to be a big part of it. And if you try to spend all your time and hope you go to the right lenders, no worries. We guarantee the very best funding that you qualify for and that exists on the marketplace. And we keep our fingers on the pulse. So we're always adding and testing new sources to see who's going to be the best source for you. That's fantastic. Really appreciate it. Okay. Have an awesome day, guys. Thanks so much, Scott. We'll see you guys next time on the Seven Figures Club podcast. Thank you so much.